Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. All men have the Ten Commandments written on their hearts. Not just Christians, but all men. And not just the second table of the Ten Commandments, commandment number five through ten, but all Ten Commandments. The second table of the law, the Ten Commandments, pertains to how we love others, people, our neighbor. Right? Starting with commandment number five, honor thy father and mother. Commandment number six, do not murder. Commandment number seven, do not commit adultery. Commandment number eight, do not steal. Commandment number nine, do not bear false witness. Commandment number ten, do not covet. Not only has that been written on the, on the hearts of men through natural law and displayed in natural revelation so that all men are without an excuse, all of humanity, not just the church, but all of humankind, not only has that been written on the hearts of men and displayed in natural revelation, but the first table of the law, the first table of the moral law of God, the Ten Commandments, commandment one through four, is also written on the hearts of all people. Commandment number one through four, dealing with not how we love neighbor, but how we love the Lord our God. Commandment number one, have no other gods before me. Commandment number two, do not make any graven images. Commandment number three, do not take the Lord's name in vain. And commandment number four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And you might say, but, but, but people in some lost tribe down in South America that have never received a missionary, an evangelist, or a single page of the Bible, how could they possibly know that by virtue of natural revelation, God revealing himself by what he has made, and the Imago Dei, natural law, the law of God being written on their hearts? How could they possibly know that? Well, they can know the fourth commandment because God has built into the fabric and pattern of his world. Remember, this is God's world. He set it up. He made it work in a specific way that speaks to him, his existence, and his character. God has set into the fabric of the world seasons. There's a time to plant, a time to harvest. God has set into the world not only that, but we have learned, even even the atheists would acknowledge, hey, you know what? It turns out when it comes to agriculture, it is good to give the land a rest. And typically about one in seven years. Hmm, what a coincidence. Right? That, that you should harvest, plant and harvest for six years. And then the seventh year, if you give the land a rest, it'll actually, in the eighth year, when you repeat the process, it'll produce exponentially more product, more fruit, a bigger harvest. Oh, so, so you're saying that, that built into the fabric of the world, whether I've ever received the Bible or not, there's a pattern worked even into the ground of a one in seven days rest? Yeah. God has revealed himself to all people. And Romans 1 says that, that by virtue of what God has made through creation itself, testifying to God, that it says, it shows his, his um, eternal or, or his attributes, his eternal power and divine nature. Right? That this is seen by virtue of what God has made. That there is a God in heaven. And therefore, it logically follows... Image bearers can logically assume and conclude from that the existence of God displayed by what he has made, that we shouldn't worship other gods, that we should worship the true God, right? And we can't see this God, so we should not have images. We shouldn't worship lions and oxen and cattle and this and that, saying, well, this is the real God. This is what he looks like. No, 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 no. He is a God in heaven. We don't know what he looks like, so we, we should worship by faith, and faith comes by what we hear but not by what we see. So there is one God worthy of our worship, and this God has chosen to be the invisible God. He has not made himself visible to mankind. So we worship him in the ways he has revealed himself, and he has not revealed an image for us to worship. And because this is the true God worthy of our worship who created all things, it only logically follows that we shouldn't shouldn't be trivial and trite and take his name in vain. Wait, wait, wait. Real quick, before you go, do me a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the bell so you'll be notified with all our new content as it comes out on a daily basis, and if you're willing to support this ministry, you can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com donate. Thanks so much. God bless.